Digital transformation and ERP implementations don't succeed due to luck or just because we try a bunch of different stuff and hope that it works. It's because we have a system, a repeatable system for success. But what exactly constitutes a repeatable system for digital transformation or ERP implementation success? That's what I want to talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent and technology agnostic consulting firm that helps clients with their digital transformations, including their software selection, digital strategy, and implementation of new technologies. And when we're helping clients through digital transformations, one of the things that we advise them on is that you're not gonna be successful because you just happen to be lucky or because you happen to pick the right technology or even because your software vendor system integrator happened to share a couple methodologies or tool sets that are gonna help you. What you need is a comprehensive and complete system, a repeatable process, repeatable system to make your project successful. If you look at any successful organization that has scaled and become effective and successful over the years, you'll find that they have repeatable systems. They have documented processes, they have documented ways of doing things, and they have repeatable ways of doing things. Not to say that everything is a cookie cutter and you do things exactly the same way from organization to organization during a digital transformation, but you do have a methodology and framework and certain things that you do, no matter what kind of organization you may be. So what I would like to do today is talk about a system that's repeatable that you can use to make your digital transformation successful. And some of the elements that you'll see that we'll talk about here today are things that your software vendor or system integrator might be suggesting to you, but chances are pretty high you're gonna learn some things in this video that are well beyond the scope of what a software vendor would typically focus on because there's so much that goes into a successful and repeatable digital transformation. Before we dive too far into today's content, I wanna share a little bit of information about Third Stage Consulting and who we are. Third Stage Consulting Group is an independent technology agnostic provider of consulting services to help clients through their digital transformations. We help with digital strategy and software selection, as well as implementation planning. And during implementation, we provide services related to program management, organizational change, business process improvement, as well as enterprise architecture. These are just some of the services we provide. We have offices in North America, as well as Europe and Asia Pacific. So if you'd like to learn more, I encourage you to check out our resource center, which includes a number of resources that will help you through your digital transformation. And you can access that for free using the QR code here or the links below. You can also reach out to me directly if you'd like to discuss your digital transformation and brainstorm ideas on how to improve where you're headed on your journey. Now let's jump back into today's content. The first important phase of a system to be successful in digital transformation is to define your digital strategy and software selection in a way that aligns with your business needs and is tailored to who you are as an organization. And for each of these slides I'm gonna walk through here today, I'm gonna to give you a high level overview, but I'm not gonna go into each one in a ton of detail. I'm happy to share these slides with you if you'd like to reach out to me after the fact, but I'm going to just kind of walk through and summarize what are in some of these processes and systems and in other videos or side conversations we may have, I'm happy to share some more additional details with you. But in this case, with digital strategy and software selection, you can see there's a number of work streams that should happen during that phase. And a number of these work streams will continue throughout the project as well. That's part of the repeatable process is having work streams that start early on in digital strategy and software selection and continue all the way through implementation planning, implementation, and even post-implementation as well. So to start, let's look at some of the major work streams here. First of all, business process management. That's an important part of a digital transformation starting with your evaluation of potential technologies. This is where we need to look at our current state and future state and define what our process improvements are going to be in the future. And ideally, in a perfect world, you would do as much of this business process work as you can up front before you even select technologies. Having said that, a lot of organizations don't have the resources or the budget to do that up front because they don't have a project necessarily approved yet. So in that case, you may have to tighten the window or, or summarize some of the most important process improvements that you expect to see from the transformation. But regardless, you do want to spend a certain amount of time on business process management during your transformation. The next work stream is organizational change management. When you're defining your digital strategy and roadmap, there's no way for you to know where you're going and how you're going to get there if you haven't defined how the people are going to change and what your change strategy is to help them get there. And during this digital strategy phase, typically what we're doing within this work stream is an organizational assessment 
and an organizational impact to understand the current lay of the land of where you are today, where you're headed in the future, and how the culture can and should be impacted as a result of the change from current state to future state. And then finally, last but not least, you take these as inputs into your organizational change plan and your change strategy that becomes part of your implementation and your overall digital transformation plan going forward. And I'll talk about that in the next section in more detail. There's also enterprise applications. So we're evaluating software options, a long list, a short list, doing deep dive demos, getting RFPs. Perhaps you turn to companies like Third Stage Consulting that has agnostic and objective data about all the different software vendors in the marketplace. Whatever you do, you want to make sure that you evaluate and define what technology or technologies you could be deploying and ultimately define what that roadmap is going forward. You also have solution architecture. We need to look at our architecture and understand our current landscape and define what it's going to be in the future so that we can change our infrastructure, so we can upskill our IT organization to reflect where it is we're headed as an organization. And again, this assessment becomes part of our overall implementation plan, which comes in the next phase of our process that we'll talk about here today. And then finally, business intelligence and analytics is a way to define what our future state is for analytics, for reporting, business intelligence, and even artificial intelligence. How can and should we be using artificial intelligence and other emerging analytical technologies to make our transformation more effective? And all of that assessment and all that definition that we do here becomes part of our implementation plan going forward. And then something you'll see sort of underlying and running in parallel throughout the entire project is project quality assurance and program management, program governance, a way to really make sure the project stays on track and that we have the right controls in place, the right mechanisms to ensure that our digital strategy and our digital transformation stays on track. The next phase of a successful digital transformation system is implementation planning. We often refer to this as either implementation readiness and or phase zero. There's a few different ways you can think of it. But essentially what implementation readiness phase zero is, is implementation planning. We are planning and preparing for what's about to happen with the implementation. Now, one of the pitfalls to be aware of is most organizations have this tendency to go through the digital strategy slide that we just went through. They'll decide on the technologies that they want. They're so excited for the new technologies, they just jump in and start deploying new technologies. They don't think about what the plan is. How are we gonna get there? Well, how are we gonna resource this? How and when should we be leveraging our system integrator? What is our system integrator's role versus our role? What is our business process blueprint? What are our technical requirements? All those things have to become part of our implementation plan so that we have a good way to have this blueprint to manage our project going forward, rather than just assuming that our software vendor system integrator will manage it for us. The system integrator and software vendor is just one component of an overall transformation, so they alone are not gonna help you define what that implementation plan is. We need to think of this as more of a program management plan an entire complete program that entails a digital and business transformation, not just the deployment of new technologies. So you'll see again, a lot of the similar work streams running in parallel here. The only difference here is that you have now strategic and executive alignment. This is where we make sure as we head into our implementation that we have alignment on what it is we want the business to look like in the future, what our strategic goals and objectives are for the future as an executive team, Make sure the executives all agree on where we're headed and how we're gonna make decisions and what the role of the executive team is going to be throughout the implementation. A lot of different decisions like that need to happen within the strategic executive and alignment piece of implementation readiness. We also have operational readiness. This is where we start to go a little bit deeper than where we were in our digital strategy phase. Now we start to get deeper into the business processes and defining what the blueprint is and what people's jobs are gonna look like in the future, how their jobs are gonna change, so that we have a clear process blueprint that we can then engage our system integrator software vendors to design and build software that fits our business processes rather than the other way around. Now, software vendors and system integrators will tell you, don't bother with that because our technology has best practices. We have industry pre-configurations. You can't define your future state without knowing how our software works. Sort of, that's sort of true, but not really. What's true is that you need to know what you want your business processes to be, regardless of what technology you deploy. And then as you get down to the transactional workflow level of detail, that's where you need to know how the technology works. And that's where your system integrator and your software vendor gets involved. At this point, we're defining still macro level business processes down to the mid-level of business processes, basically up until that point where 
we can't define any more detail until we know exactly how the software works. And that's the point we want to get to here. And then later we'll get to the additional detail and sort of an iterative process in our business process management. So operational readiness is critical. People readiness is critical. Now we define our change and communications strategy and plan in more detail based on what we've defined in the digital strategy and software selection phase of the project. We now get into technical readiness to define how we're going to deploy new technologies. How are we going to roll out the different systems? How are we going to phase the systems? How are we going to transition out our legacy systems? Which legacy systems are we going to keep? How are we going to integrate to those legacy systems? Those are all decisions we have to make and make sure we have a clear plan for or else our implementation plan is not complete and it's not realistic. So we have to define this technical readiness piece up front during our planning phase. And then finally, as I mentioned before, running in parallel is project governance and planning. You should now have your PMO in place, your project governance, your project charter, how roles and responsibilities are going to be laid out in the project and all that good stuff should be defined here. So it's important to take the time to do this implementation readiness, this implementation planning phase zero. And if you'd like to learn more about implementation readiness phase zero and how it works and what some of the detailed deliverables are, I encourage you to watch this video right here on my YouTube channel that dives into this topic in more detail. And you can watch that video to learn more about this methodology. Next, we get into implementation. This is where the rubber meets the road and we start to get into the details of actual execution of a project. So by now, we've defined our digital strategy. We've spent the time to do implementation readiness and planning, and we are fully ready to start the implementation. And this is really important because, again, we don't want to start this phase too early until we've spent enough time on that implementation readiness, or else we are going to spend way too much time on the implementation if we haven't done that implementation readiness as a prerequisite. So there's a few different work streams we'll talk about here. One is program management and support. So this is really important, especially as you get into implementation to make sure that you have the right controls and governance in place. And really you want this to be owned by you, the implementing organization, not by your software vendor, not by your system integrator. They will likely provide you project management resources in a project manager, but you need a program manager and a project manager. I know it sounds like I'm just being uh, picky about what words are I use here, but it's really important. Program management and project management are very different. In fact, so different that I created a whole video on it, which you can watch right here. It talks about the difference between program management, and project management, and how you should structure your project. So I encourage you to watch this video right here if you'd like to learn more about that topic. But to summarize here, I'll say that program management is your way to own and control the project and make sure you have accountability and responsibility for making sure the project is successful, not your system integrator, not your software vendor. In fact, even when clients hire us to help them with program management, we are essentially an extension of their team. We are not a separate program manager. We don't represent the software vendors or the system integrators. We are just working with the client to be an extension of their team so that they can manage the program more effectively. So that's really important during implementation to ensure your project stays on track. You also have organizational change management. This is really important and there's so many different ways your change strategy can play out depending on your culture and how your change is unfolding what your goals and objectives are. So I'm not going to get into sort of a cookie cutter approach for change management, but I am going to get into this in the next section in a little bit more detail. So stay tuned to the next section of this video. And there's also business process management. Here's where we get down into the detailed weeds of how exactly different workflows are going to work, the integrated end-to-end -end processes, how technology is now going to merge in and complement the business processes that we've defined in earlier stages of the project. And ultimately this becomes the blueprint for how the system integrator and the software vendor is going to deploy new technologies. And then finally, business technology integration. So here's where we look at how do we bring together business and technology and integration? How do we tie together multiple systems? How do we tie together multiple processes? How do we tie together data? How do we ensure that we have the right analytics, the right business intelligence, et cetera? So this whole business and technology integration work stream is another really important component of implementations that need to be considered as well. Now, the next thing we want to look at during an implementation, and this is actually breaking out one of the work streams on the previous section in more detail, and that is business process management. And if we go back to the slide right here, you can see that we had business process management as a work stream that started during digital strategy and selection, continued in implementation planning, and then continued through implementation. Now what we do is we unpack this work stream a little bit more to talk about what exactly falls into business process management. 
So here's where we talk about the business goals and objectives of the company. This is really important to make sure that our future state business processes are aligned with where we're headed as an organization. We also define our current and future state business processes so that we understand where we're going and also where the gaps are between where we are today and what the future state's going to look like. And that's gonna become really important for our change management strategy, which I'm gonna talk about in the next section. We also want to start to quantify business benefits and KPIs and metrics, key performance indicators and metrics. So here's where we start to assign actual performance measures to the processes so that we can set targets and hold people accountable for achieving the business value that we expect to get from our transformation. And then we ultimately define our change impacts. You know, how are people going to be affected by change throughout the organization? And ultimately, what are the risks of making these process changes along the way? And all this stuff, the interim process improvement plan, future state, strategy and roadmap, change management plan, this all is dependent and contingent upon getting this piece right with the business process management piece of it. So business process management is not something you can just defer to the technology and assume that a pre-configured version of the software is gonna tell you how to run your process. You need to define what it is you wanna be operationally and what your future state operating model is going to be. And future state operating model is a fancy word or a buzzword for future state business processes. What do you wanna be when you grow up? How do you want your operations to run? Now the final and arguably most important piece of a effective digital transformation system is organizational change management. I discussed earlier how it's almost impossible to define a change management strategy without knowing what exactly the change is and what your strategy is as an organization. So I can't really give you a cookie cutter approach for this piece of the implementation phase, but what I can do is give you a way to figure out what strategy and what pieces of the tool set within change management make the most sense for you and are gonna work best for you. And this is what this uh, change management framework summarizes right here. And this is a framework we typically go through with clients. We will start with a change readiness assessment and really understanding the culture of the organization, understanding the characteristics and personality of the organization, understanding and anticipating what the potential sources of resistance are going to be and ultimately understanding a lay of the land. What are the risks? What are the strengths of the organization? What is the culture? And ultimately, what is a change strategy that's gonna make the most sense for this organization? We then start to integrate a change strategy within the overall change management plan based on a number of different criteria and based on the assessment we did early on. And then ultimately we mobilize and start to execute the change plan. This is a long way of saying that you need to assess and understand your current state and your future state, where you're going before you can get to and define what your detailed change strategy and plan is. It doesn't do you a whole lot of good just to take a one size fits all answer or a scattershot approach to just trying a bunch of different stuff. Instead, what this framework does, is it allows you to be a little bit more surgical and prescriptive based on who you are as an organization. And every time we've ever done this for our clients, the change strategy looks different. There's some similarities, of course. There's a common tool set, a common mix of tools that we use across different clients, but the exact mix, the exact dosage, the way we deploy those methodologies, it looks different for every client as it should because every client's different. Every client has a different culture and different set of goals and objectives and different political and organizational realities that they're dealing with. So this change assessment is critical to do not only in the digital strategy phase, but also as you get deeper into the project, right when you're starting implementation, you wanna do a more detailed assessment to understand the change impact and the path forward. So I hope this has given you an understanding of a system and a process that you can repeat and scale with your organization. And it's also a way to really make sure that you set yourself up for success. You're not gonna be successful in a project if you don't have a deliberate and a complete methodology and approach and tool set and process so it's important that you define what that process is gonna be going forward. And I hope this has given you a framework to start with. If you'd like to learn more or dive into this content from today in more detail, I encourage you to reach out to my team and I, be happy to sit down with you and chat through this in more detail and discuss how you might leverage this process and this system for your digital transformation. I've included my contact information below, so be sure to check that out. You can also check out our 2024 digital transformation report to learn more about trends and new technologies in the industry and things that might help you through your digital transformation. You can download that report by scanning the QR code in front of you, or you can go to the links below. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day. Digital transformations in ERP projects don't... <laughs> I, I was ready to nail that until you ran into the chair, great.
and it's more likely to make, no, try that again. So what I want to do today, do, do day? I also mentioned that it's also, <laughs> I will never, never recreate that magic again. <laughs>